Hi, my name is Alma and welcome to my book journey. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today I'm really excited about going over all the books that I read for February. Right. <laughs> I had to stop and think. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired right now. Um, had a busy day, went to church, and then right after church, my family and I went to see the book, the movie, the book. I'm getting my movies and books mixed up. We went to see the last two episodes of the Chosen series. They've been playing those at the theaters. And so we, my son, think he was such, such a sweetheart. He um, bought tickets for the family to go see the Chosen. So, and we got to see all the episodes. So the last, I think we saw seven and eight today. So we saw all eight episodes in the theaters, which was awesome. And we really loved that um, season, season four. We really loved season four. Now we're like, we have to wait till the next season comes out, which they already started filming, they said. So that's pretty good. But it ended on a really, really great part. So we we're excited about that. So, and it's warm. <laughs> Spring is here where I live. It's really warm today. So I'm going to be drinking this water throughout the video. So like I said, today I am finally getting around to my February wrap up. I apologize. It took me so long, but I was a little behind in, in getting some, some books read and everything. So here I am today. And then as I was going through my list of the books I read um, this month, I was trying to remember, oh, especially the ones I read at the beginning of the month, I was trying to think, okay, I hope I can remember what they were about. So this month I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I wrote it. I, I wrote. I read eleven books, and I read a lot of good ones this this month. And so I'm just gonna uh, see if I can go in order this time of in order of the books that I read, starting from you know from the beginning of the month down, and try to do my best to remember what they were about because. It seems like the beginning of February was uh, forever ago. So the first, um, and then I'll also, as I go through, I'll let you know what, if they were part of my, re if any of my, uh, were part of, if any of these were part of my reading, uh, reading challenges and things like that. And so the first book that I read in February was A Legendary by Stephanie Garber. And this one was, is the second book in the Caravelle series, but and I read the first, I read the first book in January, and then I right away started reading Legendary. And you know, I was funny. I was uh, when I was getting my books together, I thought, hey, I I didn't put the third book in my March TBR because I am itching to read the third book. So maybe if I if I finish all my other books that I want to read in 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 March, I might add the third book. And, and that one's called Finale, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, I do uh, uh, want to thank, because um, I, I, when I talked about Caravelle in my um, January wrap, out, wrap up, I talked about how I originally was uh, told by somebody to read this series first before I, I went to the next series. And I couldn't remember at the time when I was uh, talking about it, I couldn't remember who it was that told, gave me that good advice because I really love Caravelle. That's one of my favorite books that I read in, in January. And that was Miriam Elizabeth Reads. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for giving me that advice to read these first three before going on to the next series. And so I really, like I said, I really love Car uh, the first book, Caravelle. And so that book kind of prepared me for Legendary. So Legendary picks up the story of the two sisters, uh, Donatella and Scarlet. And since I had already read the first one and I knew kind of how that story went as far as, you know, the twists and turns, I kind of read it kind of knowing, well, you know, this is, not everything is as it, as it seems. So I guess it wasn't as, I, I did enjoy the story, but it wasn't as fun as reading Caravelle for the first time and, and all the different, the uniqueness of it and everything. And so, 
So that one, and then also there was a character's name. As soon as I read it, I recognized it from somebody um, reviewing like the next series. And I thought, oh, well, this person's going to be important in the next in the next series. And this is an important character. So I start paying attention. So that kind of, you know, not a spoiler, but kind of, I just kind of threw me. But anyway, it was a good story. I don't want to go into too much of it because it is the second part in a in the in the series and if you haven't read caravel um it this is a let me see when did this book came out i guess uh, legendary came out in 2018 so it's been out for a while but if you haven't if you're like me and you hadn't gotten around to reading it i would highly recommend this uh series and like i said i only read the first two and then i'm hopefully read the next one next month so that was the first book i read for the month and then the second book i read in february i like it when i have the actual books on hand because i can look through it and rem remind myself so this one was the second book i read and this one is uh, another it's my doggy he is chasing his bone to make a lot of noise sorry about that so the second book i read in february was trapped by irene hannon and this was this is also a second book in a series in the private justice series and this was so good too i really like irene hannon so this is a, a book that is a christian a suspense and it is about a private investigation team uh, that is uh, th three members of their three uh, I don't know why I always get tongue tied when I try to describe this book. It's three men, former, former, um, let's see, one's a former uh, detective, former Secret Service, and former something else, ATF, ATF agent. And that's who's in this book. So the, and this is about a young woman who is, who, is 16 and she runs away from her half sister and during like a winter storm and she's not able to leave on the bus like she wanted to and she ends up getting stuck in town and then circumstances arise and and she gets trapped somewhere and um and it's the the story is about the half sister that hires this private investigative team to find her sister, and it is really good. And the the even though it has um, it's suspense and you know trying to find the, the the sister, there is some romance, a little bit of romance with with the private eye that's handling her case. And so I really enjoyed this book. So was just as good as the as the as the first one and the person that's like the bad guy is really really odd he's really strange and just the whole story is 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 crazy but it was really good it was a really good fun fast read so that was book number two and let's see and then for my third book i read this is the book that i read with my husband that I read to him aloud and it was and that book is called the rancher takes his convenient bride and and the, it's funny because the reason I I picked that book to read with my husband was because the the main character Keaton he was a military guy that the premise of the the book is is that he goes to Montana to to this ranch and he is going to build like a, a a not an exercise but like a place for military people can come and train and with the guns and all that kind of stuff and he's going to be doing that on this ranch and i thought oh well that's you know because my husband was in the military and i thought he would enjoy that and he could you know enjoy that with me and it it turns out it was part of the book but it wasn't a, it wasn't a whole part of the book i mean it was really interesting now the 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 funny thing about this place where this where keaton this guy went to 
they they had a zoning law that was interesting. I had to write it down because I was like, I'm going to forget this, but I wrote it down. And it, the zoning law had to do with mi military people coming to live on this particular ranch. And the zoning law is, and I'm, I'm sorry, I got my notes down here, was that if, this, if a soldier wanted to live on the land of the Purple Heart Ranch, and that's what the ranch was, the Purple Heart Ranch, if they wanted to live there, they had to be married within three months or they had to leave. So he was not part of that because he was a, he was he he was going to have his property on the side. He, he was going to be part of the ranch, but not part of the ranch. So he had a, a way out of that, or it didn't apply to him, I guess, because he wasn't actually going to live on the ranch. He was just going to work on the ranch, I think. But he ends up needing to buy for an order for his. Um, plan to work, he needed to buy a little piece of the property that was right next to the ranch where he was going to do his, uh, his, I wish I had the word for it, his uh, training place. And the, so he was just going to like, well, I'll just buy, see if I will, I'll buy this little part of the creek or whatever from the owner of this, this land here. And it was a woman that was, she was running her ranch pretty much by herself because her family had kind of like all left, you know, they, they wanted to do other things and, and they kind of left her to run the ranch by herself. And so he went over there to, to, you know, buy her piece, piece of the property and things happen unexpectedly. And which was kind of funny, but then it turns out that he, when she was she was going through had money problems so she thought well this would be a good thing for me to do you know i can sell him this this property and make some money to help myself but in order for every, all the paperwork and everything to go through it would, it would take forever it was going to take months and months and months and he was like on a tight deadline for his for his uh his place so the workaround was guess what a marriage he would, if he married, if they got married, then that land would automatically be his, and then he could do the things that he needed to do. And it, so that was why it was the uh, a marriage of convenience story. So, and then it go the story goes from there. And it was my husband. And I really got a kick out of it. It was it was it was a funny story because they kind of had like some really good banter back and forth between them, and you kind of just knew <laughs> that even though they were doing this because they both needed it done that they were going to start having feelings for each other and 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 then there was the story just went on and it was really good so i really recommend that book again it was called the rancher takes his convenient bride was the name of that book okay so that was the next book i read that month for that month and then another um one i read i don't have it with me is I this one was one I heard on audio and I do not do good with audio books. I I've tried several now and I think it's just I just can't seem to pay attention very well. I mean I pick up bits and pieces and everything and and so there's like some there's a couple books that I want to read I want to read I, like physically read because I because of the pieces that I did pick up from from audio I did enjoy but I just didn't, I felt like if I would have read it, I would have enjoyed it better. And this, I think this one is one that's going to be that way. This one was The Desert, Pri the Desert Princess by um, Melanie, I, I, I drew a blank, Melan Melanie Sellier. And this was about, and this one I couldn't, it was about a kind of like the Aladdin story where, but it was the gender swap Aladdin story. And I don't know, I, I thought it was okay. Like I said, it was, it's gonna be hard for me to, to rate it since I, it was hard for me to, to listen on an audio. And it was a long story. So, it, and it took a while, a long time to get, um, cause I was like, I knew it was Aladdin because of that's how it was, but it seemed like it took forever to get to where it was starting to look <laughs> or he, sound like an Aladdin story. So, 
but once it got to a certain point, it it picked up. So it was kind of a slow start for me anyway. And then it and then it I did I did like the story how it um, finished. And I'm wondering if I can't, I was going to look it up, but I forgot. I think it's part of like an, a series, maybe. Like the the world or something is is a series, but uh, I'm not sure. I do. Um, if fair, if fairy tale retellings are my cup of tea, I mean they're 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 okay to read, but uh, so far, well, I've only read a few, so I shouldn't say that all of them are like that. So maybe I need to read maybe a few more to to really see if I like them or not. So after I read that, I read uh, switch gears a little bit, and I read. The Librarian of Boone's Hollow by Kim Vogel Sawyer. And this one was really good. This one is a, was a historical, kind of a historical fiction, a Christian fiction. And this is based on, this is about a young woman who is living in Kentucky and there, during the Depression era. And she's in college. And this poor girl, she's, I believe it's like, would you, Think, uh, like a junior maybe in college maybe she has one year left of college I believe and even back then for women to go to college was you know it was a big deal but she was thriving and her her greatest desire was to be a writer but she was going through like the teacher to be a teacher track and one day her the dean calls her in and tells her that he has to uh, she has to leave she has to leave the school and it's not because she's getting bad grades or anything, but it's because her family or her parents haven't played her tuition in months and months and months. And this, of course, surprises her because she didn't realize her family was in dire straits and she calls her family and finds out that her dad has lost his job at the bank and he's an older gentleman. She's an adopted they adopted her, but they were an older couple that never had children, and they adopted her when she was real young. And he lost, because of the depression and everything, um, he had lost his job. They ended up losing their home, and they were living in a boarding house. And so she has to leave school, and she finds a job with um, what was back then the uh, the librarians that used to go on horseback or mule to the different little towns in in kentucky that were not in you know they weren't near a big city or anything and it was a government job that she could uh, earn some money and so that is her the story and at first i thought it was just going to really be focused around her and it did but we also have a character and what was his name his name was emmett and he also was at the college but he had just graduated and he could not find a job because, you know, jobs are pretty scarce back then. So he had ended up going, uh, going back home and he was from Boone's Hollow. And it was a big deal for him to go uh, to college because most men in his town, they just ended up working in the coal mines. And his dad was a coal miner. And it reminded me of that movie, October Sky, if anybody's ever seen that. I kind of got those kind of vibes from him as far as the dad wanting him to work with him in the mines and he was like he wanted you know something more for his life he he wanted to use his education and so their story and so we have that story and and there were some really really wonderful characters in here there was a woman in this town that that nobody liked i mean she was shunned and even when when um, Addie, that's her name. She went to stay with her because she needed a place to stay while she was working in this town. Just because she stayed at her house, people shunned her because she was just associated with this woman. And her story, reading about her story, the woman's story, and and why the people disliked her so much is really sad. But in the, you know, the story is just really beautiful. The way it, it ended with her getting to know the, the townspeople and doing her best to, well, she really wanted the people to, to 
it kind of it's like the Hatfields and McCoys, if anybody remembers that, where towns hated each other or people hated each other for things done in their past generations that they didn't even even remember. They just knew they needed to hate somebody for whatever reason. And so she wanted to to help with that. And and she did in her own way uh, start that. So so if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. I do. I think there's a second book and I don't know what it's about. I'm going to look that up and see. But this one it was really good. I really enjoyed this one. Okay. Read some good books this month. So the next book I read, read was Dangerous Beauty. And this one is by Ms. Melissa Coslin. And this one was really good too. This one was a fast read. It was a kind of a, it's also Christian fiction suspense, suspense book. And this one, uh, I mean, you jump right in with what's going on. And this is about uh, a young woman who was taken from her family in Mexico and um, her family is, is killed and they take her because she's so beautiful. They know that they can get some money from her if they trap him by uh, selling her. And so she's taken by uh, human traffickers and she is able to get away from them at one point. And when she's on the run and she runs into um, a gas station and a young man sees her and he notices, you know, she's barefooted and she's just, she looks scared and he, he just knows that something's wrong going on with her. And he realized what's, what's happening, that she's being kidnapped or trafficked. And he helps her, and it's it's kind of bizarre, not bizarre, but kind of odd the way he helps her right away. But you learn why later on, you know, his motivations and things. But the way that he is, he helps her is he 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 notices the the men that are following her at the gas station, and he he physically beats both of these men up. And they are able to call the authorities and get those men arrested for what they've done to her. But she is, since she is, was brought over by the, by the traffickers, you know, she's not a citizen. And he tells her, well, they'll probably, you know, they'll take you home. And, and she's afraid because she doesn't have family there anymore because they've killed them. And she, she knows that if she goes back home, they'll just take her again. And then she'll wind up in, in being kidnapped. So he says, well, I have a way for you to stay here. And that's if you marry me. So he is able to pull some strings and they, they get married that same night. And then he then brings her to his home. And she finds out that he is a very wealthy man. And, and he's very... Um, infamous I guess in the, the city where they're at with the way people view him and so he's very mysterious I didn't know as I was reading I was like is this guy a good guy or a bad guy or you know what is that so and so that is the book just follows her her story of you know where she finds herself and how she's going if she's going to stay with this man and there's a lot of little there's a big big reveal or twist at the end that I didn't see coming but you also see his story of why uh, human trafficking and and that really affect him and, and you see what he's also how he fits into that puzzle or not that puzzle but that whole in um you know it's a horrible horrible thing the human trafficking and so that is what this book is about i really enjoyed it and it was a i mean it didn't take me very long to read it because you just wanted to know okay i need to know what what's happening and and she's really a i think this is supposed to no it's not it's not i i thought it was her first book but i think she wrote something before that but it's really good highly recommend this one okay and then we have um a middle grade book that i read this one i read with my daughter it was part of our homeschool um Pro, our homeschool curriculum that we were our beta te, were uh, beta testing, um, and it was really good. And this that's this is why I read the Boone's Hollow book because I wanted to read another um, fic, uh, fiction book, uh, adult fiction book about this this subject, the the time frame, um, Great Depression in 
in Kentucky and these and this book is about it's called A Light Comes to Shadow Mountain and by Tony Buzio. And this one is really it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's about a young girl that is lives in this in this town similar to the the one that I just read. And they don't have electricity. A lot of them the towns like the Lexington is what I think the city that's closest to them, you know, they all had, they had uh, electricity for years and years, but electricity didn't come to the little places up in the Appalachian Mountains for, you know, many years later. And so this book is about that there's going to be a possibility that they're going to have electricity come, but it, since they are, the people live all spread out they would have to come together as a community to agree to have electricity so they could all each pay for a portion of it if they wanted it in their homes. And so she was trying to convince her family of getting electricity. But, you know, her mother, who had gone through a hardship with losing a child and parents due to illness, was against electricity because she just felt like it was a change that she didn't want to have to deal with. And for her, in a way, all change was bad. And she did not see the, the positive side to having electricity. And so her daughter was trying to, you know, learn about electricity, what it, what it, what were the positive ramifications, but also, she also learned about, you know, the negative things. And, and that was one of the things we talked about in our home study as well as the things, you know, you know, for us that have lived with electricity for all our lives, you know, what would it have been like without it? And what did we lose when we um, went to having electricity? So great book. I highly recommend this one, especially right now for middle grade March. It's a great um, book. Okay, let's see. Let me get my little cheat sheet here. Uh, okay, so the next one I read was another middle grade book, and that was uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, The um, Magician's Nephew. And I read this, I started reading it, and then I picked it up on audio. And this audio was good. <laughs> because I think maybe the narrator made it really interesting. I think it was, I'm trying to think, I think it was a, that um, a, a famous actor. And so he really made it uh, enjoyable to listen to. So this, that audio was good. And so this is the start of the, the, um, the Chronicles of Narnia series. And so I had, asked about i think the 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 book two i had heard came out first published wise but this one actually starts the story of where narnia comes from and so that was interesting i had never you know i didn't i've never read it before i've seen the chronicles of narnia the movie a, a long time ago so it's like oh so that's where this comes from and that's where that comes from so that was really good so this book uh, starts off with two young people and they 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 get into something that has nothing to do with them it has to do with this the the magician and his nephew is named Dig, uh, diggory and then is the magician's nephew is dig is named diggory and then his friend polly which lives next door to him get kind of sucked into the magician's little experiments that he's doing and kind of just throws them under the bus and sends them uh, on this little mission just to test his theories and they get thrown into Narnia uh, unbeknownst to them and the story is about them trying to get back home and also who they meet there and the they meet this evil witch and she's horrible <laughs> and, and then the things that they learn and it really is just a real it's just a jump start to what's coming with um narnia and we we meet aslan in this book and i didn't think we were going to meet aslan i thought aslan was you know in the next book so when he came on in the book i'm like oh awesome that's, that's aslan from i know who that is so they meet aslan and he sets up the the kingdom there 
of, you know, in, in Narnia. And it was really, like I said, I really enjoyed this one. It's a really short book, but like I said, I, heard, I did listen to it on audio and it was really a really fun, uh, fanciful, fans, fanciful book. <laughs> so I have the whole set. I will, I think I'm going to continue reading these. So that one was good. And then the next one I read was The Lost Melody by Joanne Politano. And this one, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. It was, it just took me a long time to get through this book. And I don't, maybe it was just the speed or, or, and maybe this, the, the way it was and also the, what it was about. <laughs> kind of, kind of hard as a, not hard, but um, kind of sad or sad to know that these things happened back in the day and maybe even still. Uh, this book is about a young woman who her, she's a pianist and she's a, a pianist, professional pianist that plays, you know, for people in concerts and things. And her, her father dies and her mother's already, has already passed. So it leaves her by herself, but she is not really like sad that her father has passed because he wasn't, he was pretty hard on her and she now she feels like she's free and when she died when he dies uh her like the family lawyer comes and you know tells her you know unfortunately your dad left you with a ton of debt and after you sell this and sell that you, you know you're not going to have a lot left which she was shocked because she didn't know that situation and then he also told her that her dad had been paying um for someone that was living in an in, in, in insane asylum and he had been like paying the physician the bill you know at this place for this person that was his ward and he goes well now that you know you're gonna have to pay <laughs> continue paying for this ward of your father's that's in this asylum and he didn't know who the lawyer didn't know who this person was hey baby and and she had never heard of this. So she, it was a mystery. Like, who is my dad paying for? And this is a part that kind of threw me. <laughs> so, and I think she did like investigate, like hire people to find out and, and they went in and she had the, 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 the lawyer had the name of the person that was staying there. And when she uh, inquired, they were like, well, that person is not one of our patients, never, and has never been a patient here. So she's like, well, wait a minute, my father's been paying all these years. Why, you know, is he been paying for somebody that doesn't exist? You know, it didn't make sense. And so she decides to get a job there to investigate herself, to find this person. And, but she didn't give her name. She gave another name, like to hide herself, conceal herself. And then somehow she ends up kind of almost like, being not trapped there but they they um what is the word um they admit her i guess into this uh, insane asylum so she ends up being a patient there and it's crazy <laughs> it's really so and then there's a, a doctor there that is not very kind to the patients just the way he treats them and then we have a doctor that is the opposite that you can tell he's there because he really wants to help the patients so and then you know does she find the person that she's looking for and and it's a really interesting uh story about how that all comes to be and how she how she looks for this person is this person real and how does it connect to her you know and her father and then um her her faith in this is what i what i enjoyed about the book she is to start with she you know all she can really think about is herself and you know she's free now to do what she wants and and she really living in living here among these uh, people because that in the very beginning 
of the book, uh, um, a doctor comes to her and says, hey, I'd, I'd love, I want to test this um, theory that I have with music for people that are in the insane asylum. I'd love for you to, you know, you come and play your piano with them. And she was like, no, she was like, that was, she would never, you know, she didn't want to do that. And at the end of the, by the end of the book, she is, uh, you know, it's, she's, she comes, she has a journey of that her faith takes her through what, what real freedom is as far as, you know, compared to what other people had. And it, it's, she has a real growth um, towards the end of the book, which, and that's the part that I really enjoyed watching her go from the beginning and, and the end. And so I, I really, like I said, it, it took me a while to get through it, but I did, I tabbed it up quite a bit and I, I did enjoy it. The, how she um, went through that, came through that. And she went through some horrible things in this asylum is back then. I mean, they used to throw women in the asylums for, for things that, you know, they would never do now, like for epilepsy, for, for, for women just being depressed or women just being, um, you know, any, any little thing that people, men and would, you know, put them in, in the asylums or, um, just to put people away that were enemies, you know, throw them in there and then nobody would go, would find them. So great, great book. Okay. We're getting close to the end here. So then I had the next book I read was, here's another, and it's the same thing I did last month where I put, I put this book on my February or my March TBR and it did not make it there. So this one, I picked it up and I couldn't put it down. I wanted to read, read what happened. So this book is called Powerless by Lauren Roberts. And it was so good. It was good. It was a, it's a YA fantasy about, and it's really, and it definitely gave me, as I started reading it, hunger vibe, hunger, hunger, hunger vibe, hunger game vibes. And I had forgotten that I read that book. I mean, I read that book a long time ago, but I was like, oh, yeah, I did read Hunger Games and I, I enjoyed it back then when I read it. So it, it has that kind of, not totally the same, but there's like we're, we're try, the trials and things like that. Is, is, there's something like that in this book. But this book is about a young woman named Hayden, and she is living in a world that has survived a plague. And the plague uh, gave, did something to the humans there that gave uh, the humans powers. And then also they have people that don't have powers that are called the ordinaries. And at one point in their history, they had what, what they call the purge. And that was to get rid of all the ordinaries, you know, kill them off, ban them out to what they call the scorches because they didn't want them to infect because they were, they thought they were diseased. They didn't want them to infect everybody else, which was the elite, what they call the elites or the, those with powers. And by powers, I mean like they would have like powers or abilities. One, and there were so many abilities in this book. Um, one person like had strength or telekinesis or um, the ability to change into animals or um, what was one that was, um, oh, could cause illusions and things like that. And so, like I said, she was an ordinary, like she, when she was born, her father, who was a healer, he realized that she didn't have a power. And that's, it was a death sentence really for, for you to be born without a power. So he taught her, he said, he, he taught her two things. One, he taught her how to fight. And so she'd be able to protect herself and combat and things like that. And then he also taught her how to pretend to be a psychic. And that way she could say that that was her power, that she was a psychic. And so the way he did that was he would teach her how to look at everything, their surroundings, and like to look at a person, size them up and down, and then th learn their tales and things like that. And this reminded me of a TV show that came out years ago, and it was called Psych. If anybody's seen that, comment below. 
because that's what that reminded me because this that in that in that tv show the 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 main character he his father was a policeman and he taught him the same thing taught him you know to be observant and, and things like that and, and he used that and tried to pretend he was psychic and he ended up like working for police department and they thought he was psychic but it wasn't it wasn't that it was just that he was very observant and he could solve crimes and stuff like that. but when i was reading that her how she did that i was like that reminds me of that tv show but anyway i got off a tangent so she so the story follows her and she ends up um saving um well she's also like the way she survives is is that she's a uh she lives on her own as a or you know her family's gone and she is uh, lives on the streets and she's a pickpocket and she ends up um, pickpocketing somebody that looks very wealthy and that is our our other main character his name is kai and he is the son of the king and he's also he has a awesome power because he has a power that he can take other powers like if uh, if somebody if there's a person that has a, a strength power that's around him, he takes it. He can take it on, and so he has that power. Or he has whatever powers are around him, he can do them. So he's pretty awesome. So so the book revolves around their relationship. So he is his main job is to track down and kill ordinaries, which she is. And she's pretending not to be an ordinary and because of certain circumstances, she winds up in this, like I said, with the Hunger Game thing, a, a trial of sorts. And so they have this every, I think it's every year, they have these games and these trials, excuse me, they have these trials and they pick certain people and they're all people that have powers. Well, they pick her because they think that she has a power, but she really doesn't. And she has to survive in this uh, in this trials, and then also having to uh, keep up the illusion that she is a psychic. It's really good. It's a really good story. Then of course we have the romance between um, like enemies to lovers kind of thing with her and Kai, and then it ends really like a cliffhanger, crazy end, and I'm have to read find out what happens in the next book and that one comes out in july i think so definitely want to get that one and read it so i really enjoyed it my, i read the last part of it to my husband and he he really liked it we kind of the ending we both of us said we wish something else would have happened in a certain way but we could see why they did it that way or why the author did it that way so you know it was it wasn't horrible horrible but it was it was good so highly recommend this one it's so it was like i said fast it, i i read it in a couple days and because i put it on my tbr for for march and didn't make it so there we go okay the last book i read was totally <laughs> different kind of book and this was part of um um krista from books and jams her um book club that she has she did had people wanted to join her to read uh the screw tape letters by c.s lewis and this was crazy not crazy like like uh, what an interesting concept <laughs> and this was re written in 1942 and as i'm reading certain things that the author is is saying i'm like well yeah that's happening now in our day day and day and time and you know the book is about and it's all it is is letters so it's a uh, just letters that are being written and the person that's writing the letter is a demon and he's like a higher up demon and he's writing to he says it's his nephew i think is that what he calls him his nephew but he is a like a lower demon and he's like um writing him letters his name warm wormwood is who he's writing to and he's writing him letters to give him advice because evidently in this book you know it's all fiction 
but in this book, demons are assigned, I guess, to humans, which they call patients. You know, the demon calls, you know, your patient. And, and of course, what their job is, is to keep them from, from Christ. And if they are already believers, keep them from really living an abundant life, really. And how they can tempt, how they're able to tempt you, how they're able to get you from, you know, even using the things that, one of the things is like using the things that God gave us for pleasure and for joy, the twist that the demons and Satan does to twist those things into sin and how the screw tape talks about humans you know, he despises humans, call, you know, they're dogs, animals, and, and he doesn't understand, doesn't understand love, doesn't understand, and, you know, because he's a demon. And the interesting, as you're reading this, and I, I kept having to flip-flop myself because the, he calls God, the Jesus, the enemy. So anytime you, you read the enemy, he's talking about God. And so that was kind of hard. I had to flip it in my mind. Okay, is because God is not our enemy <laughs> by any means, you know. So that was kind of hard to read, but I did tab it a lot because I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, that definitely happens. Let me see if I can find one that I can. Um, I I think the thing that got me the most maybe was the how the the demon was using the things that god gave us you know and we and we twisted and they're twisted it talks also about another part that was later in the book and later in the book was the idea of the historic historical jesus and making people just believe in the historical jesus instead of Jesus really is. And I'm like, that's, you know, that's totally happening in our, in our society today. Um, let's see here. Uh -huh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I should have marked it out before. Oh, this one's a good one. He says, uh, Um, talk when he was he would talk about like when a, a human being would repent and you know come to repentance for something that they did the the demon said you know okay fine let him do that but don't let him do anything about it don't let him act on it just let him think about it or something but don't let him follow it up with action. Um, so he says, let him, if he has any bent that way, write a book about it, you know, write, you know, write about what you're going through. That is often an excellent way of sterilizing the seeds the enemy plants in the human soul. Let him do anything but act. No amount of piety in his imagination and affections will harm us if we can keep it out of his will. As one of the humans has said, active habits are strengthened by repetitive repetition, but passive ones are weakened. The more often he feels without acting, the less he will be able ever to act. And in the long run, the less he will be able to feel. And that really got me because, you know, I've had that even in, of course, in my, in my own life when I, there's things I know I should be doing and I don't act on them. And they do, they do kind of, once you stop thinking about them or don't act on them, you, you can forget, it, forget them. And so that, that was one that I, that really got me. But I said, there's a lot of things in this book. And again, it's fiction. It's not, it's not biblical or anything like that. Like, it's just this author's um, imagination of what you know what a demon would do would be doing what they're doing as far as 
getting the getting in in the way and this one he was his patient was specifically talking his his patient or wormwood's patient was a believer so they couldn't um he's like we can't take him you know stop him from being a, he's already believers already saved in that respect and they even talk about you know the the worst thing you can do is is try to kill him because you know because if he's a because he's a believer he's just going to go over to heaven you know he talks in the one of his letters about you know the longer <clears throat> somebody lives the the longer they have to get into sin you know get into be temptation tempted and and go down a path that leads them away from god whereas you know if they die you know then they're then they're lost to the demon of course so that was an interesting part about that so it's a it's really it's it's not an easy read i mean it's a short book but it's really makes you think about stuff and how as believers we can we're we're tempted about tempted by things that we may not even think would would harm us you know little things that we let get in the way and for, for me the thing you know any anything that keeps you from the love of christ or of putting him first you know thing even if it's a good thing sometimes something that's good if it gets in the way of your relationship with christ is is not right and so yeah so i'm thankful to krista for for suggesting this this book it was really good and i probably will read it reread it later again and really dive into it and i've seen like people do studies on it you know to really take it apart and really think about things in here so I, I may do that but it was good to read it for the first time never read it before so it's a good read okay so that is all the books that I read I'm gonna I'll just go through real quick and I'll tell you what I what books I used for each challenge real quick before I forget I did um, the book that I read for um, Chantel's read your book shelf challenge was read a book under 250 pages and that one i did the um the magician's nephew i used for that one because that was a really short book and then for um katie paperbacks and ponytails read around the world uh, a thon the prompt for this month was mode of transportation on the book and that was um i used the librarian of boone's hollow because it had a little horse on it and then for Jane Reads, um, I did favorite author and I did The Trapped because Irene Hannah has become a favorite author. So that was my book for, for her challenge, Trapped. And then for Oshina's, her read Christmas, Christmas, read Christian romance challenge, I did prompt number three, which was read a new purchase. And that was The Dangerous Beauty, the human trafficking. And then for Angie Book Mama's challenge, her prompt for February was read a second, a book you got secondhand. And so any of my books were pretty much secondhand, but I think I, you know, this one I got secondhand. And so that was an easy prompt for me. And then I did do um, the, I forgot I should have been mentioning as I went along, but I did the the once of once of February, once upon a February, and I didn't get all twelve. <laughs> I was so close. So I got the first one was red rose, red on the cover, and I used legendary because the book legendary had red on the cover. And then the gender number two was fairy godmother gender flipped, and I got that one, the desert princess. And then number three was Mary Mac, male, uh, male main character, and that was the rancher that takes a convenient bride. And then the evil stepmother, a notorious villain, I did the um, C.S. Lewis, because the demon's a notorious villain. And then 
Pixie Dust, a magical character, and that was, I used the magician's nephew, magician's nephew for that. And then Midnight, the last to read a book, I did, uh, I used The Lost Melody because a lot of people recommended that one. That was, you know, the last to read that. Um, number seven is the only one I didn't get. It was lesser known retelling. I had a book to read and I just didn't get around to reading that. So I, that one I didn't get. Uh, wolf, animal, integral, integral to the plot. Um, uh, I picked my magician's nephew because Aslan was a, a lion. And then nine, uh, musical voice book that incorporates music was the, mel uh, the Lost Melody because she played the piano in the book. And then 10, long locks, girl with long hair. And that one was Dangerous Beauty. She had long hair on the cover. And then Snow Queen on a Quest, that one I used the Magician's Nephew for that one. And then the short book was also, um, Thumbelina was the short book for Magician's Nephew. So I only, I didn't get one lesser known retelling. You know, I could have done it, but I just ran out of days <laughs> to read it, read it, to, to get around to reading it. So, but I did pretty good. I got 11 out of 12. So. Not quite the godmother, but I definitely got princess, right? Which was what I was shooting for. I didn't think I'd get all 12, but I was able to use books for, you know, several prompts. So that kind of helped in the end. So that, I'm sorry this video is so long on um, this. So that was all the books that I read for February. Yes, I gotta stop and think February. I'm sorry, it just took me a while to get, get recording this video today. Running around and everything. But I think I, I'm trying to remember if I, if I mentioned everything. I, had, I read a lot of good books this month. And even though it was a short month, I read, I read quite a few books. And I don't think, I guess the only one I guess that was not a disappointment, but was of the all of them the least that... I guess I enjoyed maybe it was the Desert Princess one. But again, that was because it was the audio and maybe it was just the audio version that I didn't enjoy. Okay, so let me know down below, what did you read this February? And if you did the February, um, the February, the Once Upon a February, February readathon, you know, how'd you do? Did you make, did you get Pixie Princess? Did you get God? I saw a lot of people get, the godmother you know that's awesome so uh, let me know if you've read any of these books that i talked about today and thank you for sticking around for this long video and hanging out with me this oh it's it, it's got dark while this while i've been reading while i've been reading while i've been talking um thank you for watching and make sure you like and subscribe and come back and i'll have a video coming up um short not shortly but i'll have a video coming up um, next week, uh, end of the week or next week with some really fun uh, books that I picked up, you know, because of booktubers. Mm -hmm. They keep recommending books and I got to keep buying them, I guess. But again, thank you for watching and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.